One of the most common reasons people seek medication, either at their urgent care office or their doctor's office or even at a pharmacy or Dollar Tree, is because of cough. Cough is such a really unique disease state to treat, in my opinion, because we have lots of different medications that have lots of different mechanisms of action. And it's something that transcends the over-the-counter area and also into the prescription area. But as I found out uh, in my years of pharmacy school and being a pharmacist, our medications really aren't that great. It starts off at the bottom at a completely worthless Junko Garbanzo Beans Med, and it works its way all the way up to the top to something that not only is a prescription, but it's one of the most controlled prescriptions in the United States. It's a Schedule II medicine. So today I'm going to take you through all of them and talk about all of them. And <laughs> funny, I went through this list and I have actually tried just about all of these personally. I'm Grant Harding. I'm a licensed pharmacist in three states and a medication pricing expert. And today we're going to be looking at medications to treat cough specifically so you guys don't waste any more money. The absolute worst medication to treat a cough, in my professional opinion, is guafenacin. The brand name for this is Mucinex, and I have a Dollar Tree version here, kind of. Um, guafenacin is often sold with dextromethorphan, which we'll talk about later, but right now we're just going to focus on the guafenacin part. Guafenacin is supposed to be a mucolytic, which means it helps get the gunk out of your chest, but it's also been studied as an actual cough suppressant. For some reason, we can't make up our mind as to what it actually is. I can tell you right now, though, it's complete and total Junko Garbanzo Beans Trash Pandas Super Lulu Plum. I can tell you right now, though, it's Junko Garbanzo Beans Super Trash Pandas Crooked Thumbs Down No Way Jose. Guafenacin has lots of studies to prove that it's completely worthless. Whatever slight data you could probably hamster wheel in your mind as it being somewhat effective is not worth the price. You will never find a pharmacist recommend brand name Mucinex. That is true. The off-brand guafenacine, sometimes they do, but it's more of a go-away medicine. I'll, I'll talk about that later. Next on the list, and slightly less stupid, is dextromethorphan. And this is sold under Delsum or Robocough. Here, I have some Robocough here today. I like Robocough because it's concentrated and it's not extended release. Delsum is an extended release dextromethorphan. Dextromethorphan is only slightly better than the worst trash you could imagine. It supposedly acts in the brain to sort of lower the cough threshold. I'm slightly more prone to recommend this because this bottle of Robocough is only $5, so it is very cheap in some places. Now what's really interesting about Dextromethorphan is it looks very similar to a lot of our pain medications like codeine and morphine, and I'll talk about that later as to why. Both of those were over-the-counter, and the next one is actually over-the-counter as well, and it's codeine guafenacine. Yes, you heard that right. This is an over-the-counter medication in the United States. However, virtually all the states have their own specific requirements for it, and pretty much all of them have it banned unless there's a prescription. And I can promise you, the ones that do not have it banned, no pharmacy would sell it to you without a prescription. So codeine guafenacine, or the brand name is Cheritussin AC, is codeine which is an opiate supposedly to use to help treat pain, and then guafenacine, that thing we talked about earlier that does nothing. Coding guafenacine is super trash. And I know what you're thinking, how could that possibly be? This is like something that's a controlled substance, but it really is terrible. I've tried all three of these before, by the way, and the coding guafenacine did absolutely nothing. Coding itself actually this is factual. I'm not even kidding. Codeine does absolutely nothing in the body. That is true. Whenever your body sees codeine, it turns it into morphine. And then the morphine plays a role in uh, suppressing a cough as well as some analgesia. This is super, super relevant because some people don't transform the codeine into morphine at the same rates, especially in children. Some children are super ultra metabolizers, and they will take a little bit of codeine and turn it into a lot of morphine, which can be very, very dangerous, especially for kids. This even matters for nursing people. Pregnant people, or I guess they wouldn't be pregnant anymore. They would have their child with them. But nursing, uh, it can get into the milk and into a baby's system. And horrible things can happen. I'll just let you use your imagination there. I actually hate codeine so much, I don't even want it on the market anymore. I wish it would be taken completely off. No, nothing for pain, nothing for cough. I think it's a complete and total worthless chemical. 
I don't know why people get so excited about this. It, it really doesn't do anything. So from the American Academy of Family Physicians, codeine and other antitussives have not been proven effective for cough in adults, systemic reviews, and clinical practice guidelines from the American College of Chest Physicians. And here you can see the FDA warning about codeine use in children. Next on the list is promethazine or phenergan. This is also kind of trash, but it's trash in a different way. I've also used this before and it did absolutely nothing. So promethazine is actually an antipsychotic, people forget that, but it just so happens it's also an antihistamine and an anticholinergic antihistamine at that, and it is far more antihistaminergic than it is antipsychotic. Because of this, we actually use it a lot for nausea. It's actually pretty good for nausea, I'm not even kidding. But this brings us to another very important point. Antihistamines, specifically ones with an anticholinergic effect, can be helpful sometimes in a cough. And that's what you see going on here with promethazine. This is from the American Academy of Family Physicians. The committee strongly recommends that patients with acute cough from the common cold receive a first generation antihistamine. So these would be like Benadryl, um, uh, perilamine, which we'll talk about later, and uh, promethazine kind of, you know, it's a kind of a weird situation with that one, but it's a similar mechanism of action. They also strongly recommend the newer generation non-sedating antihistamines should not be used because they are ineffective. So the American Academy of Family Physicians is recommending a first generation over a second generation antihistamine. Bold take. This is the only time I've ever seen a first generation actually be recommended over a second generation. Now, I will say this. With cough, you will see conflicting recommendations and data about everything and this is no exception moving on capron dm this is tenderly goaded i just made that term up i used to have a bottle of capron dm i think i gave it to someone at my church but capron dm you do not need a prescription for and it's quite expensive otherwise i would be more apt to recommend it and you'll never find it either you have to have a pharmacy special order it and Capron DM contains dextromethorphan, which we talked about before is kind of like this opioid part of the equation, and perilamine, which is a first-generation antihistamine that has an anticholinergic effect. That's why I kind of like Capron DM. I don't fully recommend it because, again, it's too expensive. But we're, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel for recommendations here because none of these are really that effective. Next on the list, we have a very common prescription medication, benzonitate, or tessalon. These are medium trash begonies. Anecdotally, I've heard a lot of people say that this works for them. I've personally taken this as well, and it did absolutely nothing for me. <laughs> the way this works is pretty cool. It's supposed to kind of numb the lungs a little bit, uh, but again, it didn't do anything for me. Other people say it works fine. I don't know. The data for this is also questionable. Researchers found benzonitate had no antitussive effect when administered alone. However, it was effective when administered in combination with guafenicine. That's so weird because guafenicine doesn't do anything. <laughs> so if you give two nothings, you get a little bit of a something, apparently. You rarely ever see benzonitate prescribed with guafenicine. That's so weird. I hate this because the pills are like little roly bullies and you dump them out and they roll around like it's Katamari Damashi or something. <laughs> Honestly, whenever I become elected president, this is the first thing I'm going to change. No more benzonitate-shaped pills. Okay, folks, the last one, the pseudo-goat, is Hycodan, or Hydromet. And here we see the same pattern again. This is hydrocodone, which is an opioid, and homotropine, which is not an antihistamine, but it's anticholinergic. So you can see this combination over and over again. A lot of people regard this as the goat of all time, but I think that's because the hydrocodone part is a Schedule II med and it requires like a special prescription, and homotropine is pretty much never used for anything else, honestly, and people just associate this with it being the best. The data for this is also lacking. So it's very difficult to actually find something that's good with cough, and a lot of that has to do with the reason for the cough. Treating the underlying reason is more important than trying to suppress a cough. And that's what happened with me a couple years ago. I mentioned I tried all these things. I tried just about like everything on that list, I think, except for the last one I've tried. I've tried promethazine. I've tried it all. And lo and behold, the only thing that worked for me was a Benadryl tablet, diphenhydramine. 
most times, in my professional opinion, what I see is that people just try something and waste their time, waste their money, until the cough just sort of takes care of itself. And I think that's why people like Wafenacine so much. There's no med interactions, there's no adverse reactions. It's just a time waster until your cough just resolves itself. Folks, I hope you enjoyed that presentation with me today. I love teaching you guys about medicine, and this is really awesome. I, I love the comments you guys give me. 